All right, guys, things are looking pretty bleak. I'm down $2.4 billion since this new company moved in across the street. Wait, hold up. Did you hear that? Rewind it and play it again. I'm down $2.4 billion since this new company moved in across the street. This right here is proof that the smiling friends are committing charity fraud. So let's talk about it. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that knows the true friends are the ones that make you smile. Best way I can help you smile? If you hit that subscribe button. Come on, let's turn that frown upside down, friends. And speaking of smiles and friendship, it's about time we talked about the latest animated comedy taking the world by storm, Smiling Friends. <laughs> Dude, if you do that again, I'm gonna punch you. I'm not kidding. The show was created by and stars Michael Cusack and Zach Hadel, both of whom have their origins as online animators on sites like Newgrounds and YouTube, which, let me say, it's about gosh dang time that big network TV recognized the talent of online creators like this. We just love to see it. Smiling Friends is all about the titular company, Smiling Friends, whose goal is to help people who are feeling down by trying to put a smile on their face. Literally. There's no time to waste, Charlie. Let's go out there and make people smile! I did not think he was gonna do that. That scared me. That actually scared me a little bit. It's a great setup that allows for a lot of different adventures ranging from cheering up a princess in an old school style fantasy adventure to helping a PS2 era video game mascot get his groove back. But as I was watching the show, I noticed something that really set off my theorist alarm bells. Our story begins on Christmas Eve at a humble little charity called Smiling Friends. Did you catch that? The Smiling Friends aren't just any company, they're a charity, and that matters because charities aren't ordinary corporations. They have a whole host of extra rules and regulations that they need to follow, which, well, let's just say it's pretty hard for a group in late night animation to follow all of said rules. Seeing me get horribly tortured made you smile. And that can be a big deal. If you break these rules, that can result in the loss of status as a charity, some pretty hefty fines, and even some serious jail time for the leadership. But here's the thing, loyal theorists, the more and more I looked into the Smiling Friends and the laws around charities, the more I realized that not only have the Smiling Friends committed multiple counts of charity fraud, but they had such a massive disregard for the law that they should be shut down completely. That's right, friends, today we're tackling the scariest subject of them all, the IRS and tax law. And let's just say the biggest surprises are still ahead of us. <laughs> Dude, I warned you, I said I was gonna do that if you did that again. Get ready to grin ear to ear, friends. Let's dive into it. Now, before we really say whether or not the Smiling Friends are sort of breaking the charity terms of service, so to speak, we should clarify what we mean when we say charity and whether or not the Smiling Friends even count as one. Because in legal terms, that's actually a very specific thing. In the United States, where the Smiling Friends are based, a charity is a nonprofit organization that doesn't have to pay taxes because they do work that the Internal Revenue service, or IRS, considered exempt purposes. Now, the IRS can grant this tax-exempt status to a whole host of different groups because they want to encourage people to do good work that for-profit companies never would. Some examples of these groups free from paying taxes? Well, you have religious organizations such as churches, mosques, that sort of thing, but you also have, quote, organizations that foster national or international amateur sports. That would be stuff like the NCAA here in the United States, which runs college sports. Then there's groups dedicated to the quote, prevention of cruelty to children or animals, like the ASPCA. You know those commercials with the sad looking dogs set to In the Arms of an Angel? I'd play a clip here, but you know, copyright. Additionally, the IRS has a sort of catch-all category for everything else they consider charitable. Basically, this is for everything else that doesn't fall into any of the other categories, with the IRS listing examples as organizations that provide relief of the poor or distressed the underprivileged, lessening neighborhood tensions, or combating community deterioration. And let me tell you, this stuff covers a lot. Everything from organizations like the Crater Connection, who rescue abandoned guinea pigs, the 501st and Rebel Legions, who dress up as Star Wars characters and partner with Lucasfilm and make a wish for various charitable events, to the Zombie Squad, who work in disaster relief while cosplaying that they're saving people from the zombie apocalypse. All fantastic and wacky causes. You love to see it. Though my personal charity of choice is Child's Play, who donate toys and video games to children's hospitals around the world. They do great work. Given these rules and how weird and wild real-world charities can be, I would say that the Smiling Friends 
friends definitely count. Making people smile is exactly the sort of thing that the IRS would encourage as a mission statement, so no problem there. But that's where the good news for the smiling friends would end. See, if the IRS says you're tax exempt, it's not like they can't do a take backsies. It can be revoked if your charity doesn't follow the rules after it's formed. The IRS giveth and the IRS taketh away. Funnily enough, they actually have a handy guide that goes into all sorts of detail here called How to Lose Your 501c3 Tax Exempt Status Without Really Trying. Yes, that is a real government document actually released by the real IRS. Honestly, a lot of these are what you would expect. You have to keep your information up to date, you have to actually follow your charity's mission statement, that sort of thing. But if you go through the Smiling Friends series, you'll find that they violated at least three of these other guidelines. First of all, once your charity has an IRS approved mission statement and has been granted tax exempt status, you can't just go off and do other things with the charity all willy nilly. You have to stick to what you told the IRS you're going to do. But despite this rule being as clear as day, the Smiling Friends sure do a lot more than just bringing smiles to faces. Probably the biggest example of this is seen in the episode Who Violently Murdered Simon S. Salty, where Pim and Charlie discover that the owner of a local restaurant has been murdered. After doing the logical thing and reporting this to the police, the pair are told that due to budget cuts, the cops don't really investigate murder mysteries anymore and outsource that to another group, the Smiling Friends. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to get away with detective work as part of the mission to make people smile. If anything, that's just going to make people cry. Regardless, you can't just change the mission of your charity without informing the IRS first, so by blindly going into this murder mystery, the Smiling Friends are risking their tax exempt status for the sake of profit. However, doing this sort of extracurricular work might be the least of the Smiling Friends' worries, because secondly, the charity can't be used for anyone's private benefit. Remember, charities are supposed to be providing a greater good for society, so the money the charity spends should never be used for the private purposes of any person or company. And there are a couple moments throughout the show that suggest that Mr. Boss from the Smiling Friends isn't exactly keeping things above board here. For example, he has a DDR machine in his office that could very well have been bought using company funds. But that's just a small example, and you could argue that this is a personal item that Mr. Boss brought in just for fun, disconnected from the charity. But elsewhere in the show, we have absolute proof that Mr. Boss does have a direct private financial stake in Smiling Friends. Listen to this. Alright guys, things are looking pretty bleak. I'm down $2.4 billion since this new company moved in across the street. First off, how do you lose $2.4 billion in like a day? That's some Twitter levels of just literally burning cash. But second and more importantly, notice the verbiage that Mr. Boss uses here. Not the company is down $2.4 billion, not the charity is down $2.4 billion. He says I'm down $2.4 billion. He is talking about his personal finances here, connected to the performance of the charity. Having a multi-billion dollar stake in the outcome of your charity is like literally the textbook definition of personal benefit. And thus, the smiling friends are breaking IRS rules here. But even if we ignore everything else we've talked about thus far, if we take away all the maybes and the what ifs, there's still one thing that the smiling friends have done in this show that would absolutely ruin them. See, as non-profit organizations, charities are explicitly banned from doing one specific kind of activity, politics. And hey, I mean, that makes sense. Charities don't pay taxes because of the government, so they shouldn't be using their tax exempt status to influence the government. And that should apply at all levels of government, be it local, state, federal, or hey, I don't know, a presidential election. And hey, what do you know, but the Smiling Friends try to influence just that. In the season two episode, Mr. President, the Smiling Friends are hired to help cheer up President Jimble, the President of the United States, who was sad because everyone seems to hate him in the midst of a vicious election. And it's not very difficult to see why. Each and every one of you get one billion dollars each. So you can all be rich. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? You can't do that, you'll crash the economy. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Everybody's gonna have to give back all that money to the government. All better. Yeah, surefire way to just rock it up in the polls there, my man. Now, on the face of things, this doesn't have to be an issue for the Smiling Friends. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're breaking the rules of their nonprofit. Though the President of the United States is a public servant, perhaps the most public servant, they're also still a private citizen. That means that they can still do all sorts of normal people stuff, like owning private property, having a personal social media account, and yes, even benefiting from a charity. That is totally fine. It's 
totally above board for everyone involved. The smiling friends just cheering up the president is A-OK. -okay. However, the problem would come in if they get involved in anything involving an election. See, the IRS explicitly prohibits charities from, quote, participating in any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition to any candidate running for public office. Which is bad news bears for Charlie and Pim because the way they decide to cheer up President Jimble, they want to help him get re-elected and become his de facto campaign managers. And it's not like they were just like kinda sorta involved, they're out here helping organize speeches with foreign leaders, preparing Jimble for his debates, Charlie even accidentally convinces the secret cabal of worms that run the world media to back President Jimble. You know, I'm just now realizing that if you haven't watched the show, that probably sounds insane. Come on, everyone knows that it's actually lizards. Either way, by getting so involved with President Jimble's campaign, the smiling friends absolutely break the IRS's rules and should lose their tax-exempt status here. So yeah, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. By using the charity for personal benefit, changing the company's mission at the drop of a hat, and working for a political campaign, the smiling friends have been committing charity fraud, and at the very least should be losing their tax-exempt status. But it could have been much worse than that. See, the government doesn't take too kindly to charity fraud, especially when it comes to large sums of money. The consequences for being found guilty of charity fraud can include fines of up to millions of dollars and up to 30 years in jail depending on who is affected by said fraud. If you want a real world example, in 1992, the CEO of United Way, a nonprofit network, was forced to resign after he was found to have diverted 1.2 million from the organization to himself and his buddies. He was later found guilty of over 20 felonies and sentenced to seven years in jail. While the public perception of United Way was hurt so badly that their donations dried up for years and the general public lost trust in similar charities. And sadly, the people most directly hurt by this fraud? It's the people doing the everyday work at the charity, like Charlie and Pim. See, despite everything that I laid out here in today's theory, it's clear that Charlie and Pim both have a genuine desire to help people, to make them smile, even if it's in their own way. And just like it would for most charities, losing that tax-exempt status would likely mean the end for the Smiling Friends organization. Many charities like the Smiling Friends just don't have business models that are sustainable as, well, businesses. I mean, you just try walking into a bank and convincing them to give you a loan based on the idea of making people smile. That ain't happening, Chief. As I mentioned at the top of this episode, the reason charities and nonprofits are tax exempt is because the government wants to encourage entrepreneurs to do good in the world, creating organizations that focus on helping people rather than shareholders. Smiling Friends, the show, not the charity, ends basically every episode by showing the actual smile that Pim, Charlie, and the gang put on their client's face. The good they're doing there is being put in danger by their reckless leadership, and that doesn't put a smile on my face, loyal theorists. Or hey, maybe at the end of this the boss can just pay his taxes and the smiling friends can keep on keeping on. I mean, if he's got billions to lose, he's probably doing okay. But hey, if you really want to put a smile on your face, check out the sponsor for today's theory, Zenless Zone Zero. Let me tell you, friends, I think that a solid art direction and personality can make or break a game, and Zenless Zone Zero is packed with both. If you don't know, this is the latest game from Hoyoverse, the creators of Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail, so you can expect the same level of quality and polish from Zenless Zone Zero. Set in an urban fantasy world, the character design and music in this game is just so fun and original and it hits just right. Zenless Zone Zero combines roguelike elements with an impactful combat system. You'll need both the skill to dodge attacks and land combos, and the strategy to know when to roll them out and manage your resources to really get ahead here. It's challenging, but it feels so awesome when you string together these just crazy attacks. And the best part? Zenless Zone Zero is launching on PC, PS5, and mobile. And it's cross-platform, so you can explore solo or with your friends across all of those different devices. Zenless Zone Zero officially releases this week on July 4th, so if you want to give this game a shot, head over to the link in the description and register today. Thank you again to Zenless Zone Zero for sponsoring today's theory. Partnerships like this let us test out new series like the Smiling Friends that aren't a surefire bet, which is a dangerous game to play here in this day and age of YouTube. Once again, go to the link in the description if you want to register for the official release of Zenless Zone Zero on July 4th. But as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A film theory. And cut.